Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to be looking at trade in Port Real 4. Um, so we're going to be covering quite a few different things. We're going to go through how to set up a basic trade route, how to plan the physical route that your convoys are going to take, and we're also going to cover some more of the advanced features, plus a few hints and tips uh, so you can make the most out of your trade in Port Real 4. I've decided to do this because although the tutorials in the game are pretty good, uh, they don't quite cover everything and generally when you're playing the tutorials, you're trying to take in so much at once, it's very very easy to miss the odd bits and pieces. Okay, so here we are at the start of the Spain campaign. Um, I've just chosen Link with Buccaneer as a starting class, but it doesn't really matter too much for the purpose of this, especially uh, with the recent update where they've removed the need to buy trade licenses when you're trading with your own faction. So we'll go ahead and we'll set up a basic trade route first of all. Um, and I, I hate to state the obvious, but trade is um, trade is the, the be all and end all in this game. If you have a poor trading setup, you're going to fail very quickly because you're going to run out of money. Uh, so it's trade or die, so to speak. So um, here we go. So to create a trade route, you need to come up here and select trade routes. Click on create a new trade route and give it a name, whatever you want. We'll need to leave it as trade route one. And then you need to click on edit a route. So here we're going to select the towns that we want to be part of our trade route. So we're just going to pick a few at random. We'll pick Seville. Let's work to the left. So there we are. As you can see up here, we've added those four towns to our trade route. Uh, these dotted lines we will uh, come to later on, but they show the path that your ships are going to take. So the next step we need to do is we need to tell the game what we want our convoys to do in each of the town in terms of whether they're going to buy, uh, what they're going to buy or sell. So to do that, we select each, time, uh, each town in turn up here. So these are all the tradable commodities uh, within the game. So you get the same list in each town. And you can choose whether you want to buy them or sell them in each of the given towns. Hey, you'll also see that some of them have cogs next to them. So they're the commodities that that town is actually producing there and then. So as you go down, you'll see a few. As the game progresses, you'll get more and more. I think it's up to seven uh, commodities at the moment that can be traded in a given town. So they will. Uh, st you'll start to see more things that have a cog next to them. So... If you wanted to, you could go uh, down each item and you could go, right, so we want to buy that one, we want to buy that one, and buy that one, for example. Uh, if you click again, you'll get to choose to sell the item rather than buy it. And you click it again, it'll turn it off. Now, you may have noticed these things have appeared since we've selected something. But we're going to cover those later on, so don't worry about those for now. So a good starting strategy would be to buy what's being produced in any given town and sell what isn't. That would be a way of buying cheap, selling at a slightly more expensive price. So it can be quite laborious going through all these things. As you can see, there's 20 odd or so. What you can do is a cheeky little filter up here. We can turn them all off again and hit standard. You'll see here that it's actually done what we just said. So it's set anything that the town is producing to buy. So we're gonna buy fruits, beer, and the other things that have a cog next to them and cotton and we're going to sell everything else once again ignore all this stuff because we're going to cover that later on so a good starting strategy is to actually use this um standard actions and then so we're going to set that up before each of the towns so once again, i'm going to go standard patch standard and the next one standard it's really important that you confirm that you check your changes. So we're going to change, uh, we're going to confirm the changes here. And now all that's left to do is to give it a ship or a convoy. So up here, you'll see that we've got th three free convoys. So if you click an arrow, it will just take you to the next one. And with this screen still open, you may have noticed that a sign route has become available for us to uh, select. So if you sign the route, We'll now see that one of our boats, Smile and Wave, good name, has started uh, to go around the trade route and it will buy and sell um, as to the instructions we've given it in the trade route setup. So you'll see here, I've just clicked on these barrels, 
This shows you what the uh, convoy has bought in the previous town. And then shortly you should see that it will sell some of those and buy some more in the next town. And off it goes. So if you're finding a trade route is particularly profitable, you can add multiple convoys to it. So to do that, you go back up into trade routes, find a free convoy, and we assign the route to that. And now we've got two boats doing the same thing. So here's, here's our second one. There's our first one. So our first one's made it all the way down to here now. Let's have a look at its cargo. So its cargo is changing, it's just doing its thing. And certainly to begin with, this is a it's a surefire way of just making some decent profits within the game. So that is lesson one. That is how to set up a basic trade route. Okay, so lesson number two is we're gonna look at the actual route that our convoy's taken our trade routes. So first of all, we're going to create another trade route. And this one, we're going to do it in a slightly more circular route, a much bigger route to highlight a few points. So we just added some towns at random there. And what you'll see once again is this um, sort of dotted line has appeared. You'll see it's flowing in a certain direction. So that is the path that your ships are going to take. Uh, as they make their way around your trade route so as we've set it up now it's quite logical it's going to go just going to go keep going around in the circle uh forever and ever and ever you might now go oh crikey i've missed out this town so we've added a town in there and you'll see that it's thrown our trade route a little bit amiss there so it's going to go from port isabel up to galveston and then back to corpus christi and then it's going to come across the middle back to Seville. Now that isn't as efficient as it could be. Uh, the reason that it's not efficient is twofold. First of all, we're going past the town when we could stop at it on the way. Secondly is paying attention to which way the wind is flowing. So that's what these all swirly lines uh, indicate. So this is flowing in a little clockwise, um, what's the word, spiral uh, around this part of the map. So. If you also have your ships going in a clockwise direction, they're going to have the wind and they're going to travel much quicker uh, than they would do as if they were going against the wind. And something else to bear in mind is where the lines are red, is that where that's where there's a possibility of storms occurring, which can damage your ships and cause you to lose cargo, which is something you do not want to happen. So to fix this little problem we've got over here, there's a couple of ways of doing it. First of all, First of all, we could just um, get rid of Corpus Christi, clicking on the little bin icon there, and it's gone. But what we could do is we could change the order of this list. So to do that, we do select Corpus Christi, and move it up one slot. And you'll see now that the route is nice and efficient. It goes where we'd like it to go. Just carrying on with that clockwise trade uh, clockwise circle another thing you can do if you want to avoid these stormy areas is you can actually change this dotted line the route they're going to take so all you need to do is click on it drag and this way we're avoiding all of that area you can see now it's nice and uh, efficient runs in a clockwise direction, it's always got the wind and the towns are in the right order. And you can also see at the bottom here as well on the minimap um, where your route is going to take you as well, which is quite a nice little feature. So now we've got our route set up. Uh, final things, is we just need to tell, tell it what we want to happen on each of our trade routes, on each of our towns rather. So we're just going to do it as standard for now. I'm going to confirm our settings, we'll find a free convoy and we're going to assign it. So now you'll see that the grumbler is gradually waking its way around uh, in that um, clockwise route that we have set and it will buy and sell um, as, to, as per the instructions that we gave it. 
So that is lesson number two. That is how to choose the route that your ships are going to take. Okay, so our next lesson is going to be the slightly more advanced features within the trade route setup. So we're going to create a new trade route. We'll edit the route. We'll select two towns. I'm going to go into the first one. And this is where we're going to explore uh, how to do it um, slightly more customized, so rather than just relying on the game to do it for you. So there may be examples um, within the game where you just need certain resources at certain times at any given point. It might be building resources, for example, to quickly expand the town. It might be that you're always seeing a shortage of certain goods in one town and they really need those to grow. Or you might, some, you know, one strategy within the game is using sort of one town as a bit of a, a dumping ground, a trade hub, if you will. Um, so there's quite a few examples where you may want to use these. So we are going to choose just two things to uh, explain this with. And we're going to do it with fruits and beer because they're being produced in the town. So we're going to select them both to buy. But then we're going to play with these... Um, options as well so as with a lot of things within the game it sets it to a default level but we can play with that so we're going to click here where it says one two three and this is telling us how many cargo spaces um, we want to buy uh, of any or buy or sell of any given item in this case it's buy so if I remember rightly our starting convoys all have 500 spaces so we're just going to choose 250 for half of it and then you can also choose uh, how much you want to spend um, or sell an item for. So once again, it's automated so that you will always get a profit, but you can tweak that. So if you click where it says automatic, the first option is whatever. So that means it will buy up to 250 cargo spaces worth of fruit at whatever price, whether it's expensive or cheap, doesn't matter. It will buy it, simple as that. Click again, you can actually set the price to say so okay we're not prepared to pay more than 72 gold for uh, the given product and you can change that so you could put 100 let's see what the biggest number you could do so 999 is the most you're prepared to pay um but for that you may as well just select whatever so we're going to do the same we're going to do this exact same setup uh for the beer as well if we go to whatever so just to summarize, sorry for repeating myself, but to make it clear, our convoy, once it's up and running, it, when it gets to Seville, it's gonna buy up to 250 uh, cargo spaces of fruit at whatever price they are, and the same for beer. So we'll next go to the next town, and we're gonna set it up to sell the fruits and the beers. So we're gonna sell. Two fifty, and we sell it for whatever. Same with beer. And it will do it for whatever. Um, we'll just point out uh, these stars that have appeared as well on the selling. So this is just the priority it wants you to give any given item. Um, so if you want it to be a high sales priority, give it five stars. Um, every defaults everything's a one, so therefore they all have an equal um priority but you may want to play with that uh, if you want to sell more of any given item but as we're using these filters here it doesn't really make that much difference if i'm honest so next we're going to confirm our options we're going to allocate a convoy to the route so i'll just find an empty one i've got an empty one yet i'm just looking here to see if it's empty or not zero out of 500 car capacity we'll assign the route off it goes and now we'll just watch what that ship does was it victoria so if this is up correctly we should be buying a beer and fruit up to 250 now it may not have bought 250 it's very early on it well it's at the very beginning of the spain campaign so it's quite unlikely that the town has that many should we check yes yeah, so we bought all the fruits you can see here they've got none and they've got no beer because we bought them all. And when our ship gets here, it should sell 
all of this and end up being empty. We go back to Seville, buy beer and uh, fruits and keep doing the same. So there we go, as you can see, it didn't buy anything in Seville. Uh, it didn't buy anything, sorry, in Cisal. It's gonna go back to Seville and it's gonna buy the stuff. Let's speed it up so you can see. So there we go, it's buying the items again. As before, it's not gonna be able to get to 250 at the moment purely because the town isn't producing enough, but I assure you it will buy up to 250 should the town have enough. Uh, so that ends the lesson on the slightly more advanced features of the trade window. Um, thinking of reasons that you might wanna do that could be, like I said before, maybe you want to expand a particular settlement like really quickly so you might set up a trade route that goes around different places buying the bricks buying the wood and other building materials and just dumps them um, at a given town help them to grow really really quickly it could be um and something that i do as a little strategy is i will have a trade route that goes around all the different settlements buying stuff that the viceroy wants so I don't know how far into the game you might be when you're watching this. I'll maybe quickly show you that. So to help you build fame, Viceroy will always wants cotton, tobacco, cacao, and coffee delivering to your capital city. In this instance, it's down here somewhere. Yeah, so in this instance here, but it always has a crown above it. And you gain fame points by delivering these items. So something I do is I set up a trade route there's the hometown again. Set up a trade route that goes around all these areas. So for example, here it would buy the tobacco. Here it would buy the coffee beans. Might come here and buy the cacao and so on and so forth. And it would dump them all in Seville. So it would go around buying them at whatever price, selling them at whatever price in Seville. And then I would have a separate convoy that's going from Seville all the way down to Malachibo, I don't know, probably, probably absolutely massacring the Spanish language there, sorry, um, and selling them at whatever price. So it's not profitable. Um, I'm sure there'll be uh, people, if you have made comments going, oh, that's rubbish, that's not efficient. Uh, don't forget that you're having other profitable trade routes that allow you to take this loss. It's a really good tactic for gaining fame as well. And you'll also found that the capital city is always in desperate need for pretty much all resources. So um it's a surefire way to get rid of stuff and to make some money but yeah you probably you know doing that little tactic i talked about there probably will make a loss on that one or two trade routes but overall you'll be absolutely cane in it so don't worry okay that one went on a little bit longer than i thought so now we're just going to come into a few um little hints and tips the next tip is to actually keep an eye on your trade routes in terms of what they're buying and selling um the reason why you need to do that is because as you play the game your towns are going to start producing more items than they did at the start whether that's through you adding new businesses or the ai doing it so in seville previously it was just doing selling, uh, producing four items. Um, it wasn't producing the tobacco. I've just built some farms, so it's now producing tobacco as well. But when we go into our trade route, the trade route doesn't know that Seville is now producing tobacco. So I'll show you how to update that. So we're going to go into trade routes, choose the trade route you want, and edit route. Then you want to select the town that you want to change. So this was set up using the automated one. And you will see as we scroll down and find tobacco that it's still set to sell tobacco now obviously that is no good so there's two different things ways you can do it you can either just click and click again so it goes to buy or if there's been lots of changes and you can't be bothered to trawl through all of the items you can go all off standard again and that will do exactly the same thing and it will add the new lines that your settlement is now producing so you could work your way down if you've expanded a few on the route. I haven't changed any others, but you can see how quickly you can do it. Confirm your changes, close it down, 
and off they go. So now the convoy will buy tobacco in Seville, obviously up to the quantities and whatever and prices that we have set. So that's another little tip. Um, last little tip is actually removing your ships from their trade route on the fly. And there's a couple of different reasons you might want to do this. One of them might be that you see a town specific quest to see it. Oh, if we mouse over the little star, this town wants 60 uh, cakes delivered ASAP. Um, so what you could do, you think, okay, I've got a convoy nearby. I can deal with that. So, so what we want to do is click on the convoy and go to the route tab and just uncheck the route active. And that will now give us complete control over where this convoy goes, as you can see. So what we could do is we could accept the quest and then we could go specifically on the hunt for those cakes and get them delivered. Secondly, if we can find one, and I don't think there's any around at the moment, but as your convoys are traveling around the sea, across the sea, is it around the sea, across the sea, across the sea, um, they will come across little uh, quest icons sort of potentially in the middle of open water. So that might be a stranded sailor, it might be a message in a bottle or whatever. So you'd want to make sure that your convoy can go over and deal with it. So let's say, for example, there's a, something here, we can send our ship over to deal with it, whatever that might be. That might be. Next, we would complete whatever the task is. So sometimes you have to deliver a person to a particular town or whatever. But then we obviously want that ship to get back onto its trade route and to start making us money again. So to do that very simply is to select your ship. We're going to recheck this route active. And it will automatically pick up where it left off on the trade route that it was uh, assigned to. So hopefully you'll find that a nice little tip as well. And there we have it folks. That's kind of my basic trade route guide. Um, touch briefly on strategy and we'll probably go and do a separate video based purely on strategy and the best ways of making big fat dirty money um, in another one. But hopefully you found this useful because the world of Port Real 4 can be quite confusing, can be quite intimidating for new players. So if you've liked the video, do us a favour, give us a thumbs up. Um, if you've got any suggestions that you uh, think would be beneficial to newer players, put them in the comments below and we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.